Hey there, Tom here with the Google Workspace for Education team. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can take advantage of the storage management tools available in the Google Admin Console. Let's get started. Starting from the Admin Console homepage, you'll be able to find a new category called Storage from the main page or from the menu. Click Storage to get to your storage summary. This is your new storage landing page. This page is a summary of how your educational institution is using storage across Google Workspace products. Google Workspace uses pooled storage, or simply storage that each student, faculty, and staff member shares with one another by default. The first thing to notice on this landing page is your Workspace storage summary. Here, you can see how much storage everyone is using across all Workspace products and how much is left based on your Workspace for Education subscription and number of users. From here, there are metrics for each product, Google Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos. Your total storage amount is calculated based on your licensing and how many users are in your school's workspace environment. This number is the maximum amount of storage all of your users combined can use. Below your storage summary are three cards. The first, storage settings, is how you manage storage limits across your workspace. We'll dig into that in a moment. Next to that is users using the most storage. Here you'll get a snapshot of who is using the most storage in your workspace. You can click on a user's name to navigate to their user detail page and get a breakdown of how they're using storage. Please note, admins cannot see users' individual documents from the admin console, just a summary of how much storage their documents or files are using. The third is shared drives using the most storage. This works in a similar manner to the previous, but allows admins to manage storage usage and shared drives across their organization. We'll talk more about this later in the video. The last item we'll see on this storage summary page are resources to help you understand how you can use this information to more effectively manage your storage use across Google Workspace. Let's take a look at our user directory to identify the limits we'll want to apply to users across our domain. First, let's click on View All Users. Here, You'll see that there are new columns named Drive Usage and Storage Limit. If you don't see these, you can toggle the view for these columns under the Settings icon in the top right-hand corner of the table. Additional columns are available, including Email Usage. As admins, you can export this user list, choosing all available columns in order to identify the limits you want to set. For example, using the exported Google Sheets file you can create a pivot table of average storage totals of each OU in your environment. See the Google for Education storage guide in the Help Center for details on this process. If limits are already set, you can take notice of which users are approaching or may have already reached their limit. Let's take a look at a specific user. At the top of the user detail page is a breakdown of how this specific user is consuming storage across workspace. And like before, I can examine the categories to understand how much they are using by product. Additionally, I can see if this user is inheriting their storage limit. This user is actually a media content creator, so I'm going to add them to the content creators group so that their storage limit is increased to 500 gigs and they can utilize more storage as necessary. Now, let's click on Manage under Storage Settings. By default, you'll see the storage limit settings for your entire organization. You can change this view on the left under Organizational Units. Under Storage Use and Settings, you can adjust user storage limits. By default, this setting is turned off. This means that everyone in your workspace environment won't have storage limit indicators in any workspace products. However, your pooled storage limit will always apply. To begin, You'll want to add individual storage limits to groups to ensure all high usage users are not subject to OU-based limits. For example, within the staff OU, I have a few media content creators who need more storage than other users. In this case, I have a group named Content Creators already created, so I'll apply the storage limit of 500 gigs to this group. Now anyone in or added to this group will automatically inherit a 500 gig storage limit. The group name I've used is just an example, you can apply this methodology to override OU-based limits and give anyone more or less storage. Group storage limits will always override organizational storage limits, and you can arrange which groups override each other via group settings. You can take this approach and modify storage limits for different OUs as well, starting with sub-OUs first. 
So if I wanted to have members of the staff organizational unit have more storage, I could add an individual limit of 20 gigs for all users in the specific organizational unit. This storage limit will then override any base storage limit set at the top level organizational unit. Finally, you will want to set a storage limit at the top level organizational unit to take care of any remaining users. This ensures that all users within the domain will have an individual storage limit applied in line with domain-wide pooled storage limits. For this example, we will set a storage limit of 5 gigs. Moving over to managing shared drives. From the storage landing page, we can navigate to all shared drives by clicking on view all shared drives. Here, we'll see all shared drives arranged by storage used from most to least. It's important to note that admins cannot see the contents of a shared drive from within the admin console. Should you want to free up space, admins can delete a shared drive directly from this page by mousing over the desired shared drive, clicking the more option and selecting delete shared drive. Additionally, admins can audit membership and settings of individual shared drives as needed by choosing manage membership and settings. Admins may also want to audit shared drive creation defaults under sharing settings for settings for drive and docs. For instance, for the student's OU, turning on the setting to prevent users in your school or university from creating new shared drives is recommended. In this video, we demonstrated some of the top features for managing your Google Workspace for Education storage. For more information on managing storage, please visit the Google Workspace Admin Help Center.